You're tuned in to the Barry Bot 3D channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, I apologize for a video that should have been done a long time ago. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the electrical system, I thought I'd walk you around the machine and show you where I am up to this point. May as well start with the tank. The tank is roughly uh, 20 gallons uh, when it's totally full. And uh, normally it's only holding somewhere around 15 gallons. I very rarely run it all the way up to the top unless I'm doing like a four inch, uh, four inch cut. I uh, made reference to this. This is the, uh, the water control panel. And this, ha this handles uh, like the tank fill. Uh, the tank stopper, uh, the filtration pump, the flush cup pump, the DI pump, and the bypass water pump. Now, the cool thing about this, this uh, having this control here, is this goes into a switcher box. So I can actually allow the computer to control some of these devices, or I can manually control it here. So in other words, if I have these flipped down into the auto position, that's where the computer has control over it. And what's nice about that is that this flush cup pump, for example, you know, when the cycle's done, I may not be around, um, uh, you know, to, to take care of it and turn things off. So if I had it left in the on position, it would just stay on. But if I have it in the auto position, when the computer shuts off, it automatically uh, will shut off. Uh, which is a really nice feature to have. The tank has worked out really great. Um, I don't think there's anything I would change on it. Um, the cut area is about 12 inches by 12 and a half inches and uh, four inches in height. Um, I do have some things I want to do in the future. Uh, I'm going to have a hole popper in it and eventually would like to play around with some die sinking as well. This funnel uh, feature back here that fills the tank, um, just prepping it because I want to car uh, wrap it with carbon fiber. So that's why it looks kind of funny there. <clears throat> One interesting thing is this is actually 3D printed, this little adjustment um, uh, collar here that's on this, uh, this stopper. And um, I did do some experimentation and actually th um, resin printed a uh, one of these and I was using a water soluble um, uh, resin and it held up for a while but then after about no oh, I don't know it was probably about six hours or so I started to see a little bit of um, warping in the skin right here in the opening so I went ahead and put back on the uh, PLA 3d printed one and this one's been working excellent um, I've got a few hundred hours on it now and it's it still looks, uh, it's still functioning just like uh, when I stuck it on there new. The flush cups, um, this is really working great. I lowered my, this lower flush cup is down just a little bit. It's about five eighths of an inch from this top edge, which is um, like a reference edge here. And uh, the reason I did that is when you're doing some really intricate, small detailed cutting, uh, what can happen is if the flush cup is just underneath the material, which it doesn't seem like it needs to be for most cutting. If you're doing something that's like four inches, that's where you might want to have this cup right up on the underside of your material. Um, that way you can get maximum amount of flow and pressure in the cut uh, to get rid of all the particulate that's being uh, eroded away. But um, yeah, that's worked out really good. And something that's really quite surprising to me, 
This little flexure unit here that I used to get the alignment on the upper flush cup has just worked amazingly. Um, much better than I anticipated. And uh, this is all just 3D printed out of PLA. You'll see there's a lot of parts as we go through this that I'll point out that are 3D printed. Here's the C-Arc uh, and the controller up above. This is just working flawlessly. I haven't really had to touch a single thing on this since I got it running. Um, this is also 3D printed. Uh, this little adapter plate that holds the electronics uh, that Mike so beautifully designed. And um, uh, it also holds these two these two tubes here, uh, the intake tube for the wire and the exit um, exhausted, um, expelled wire goes through here. And um, what's really neat about this is that by having a small slit in here, the, si the thickness of the wire, it makes it a hundred times easier um, if you have a wire break to get it reloaded. All you do is you just undo this little thumb stud, this little thumb um, screw here and then you can go ahead and slide the whole tube out and usually you leave a length of about four inches or so of wire so that you can feed it back in right here you just drop it in here and it slides in through this crack so that's kind of a neat feature I went ahead and added this additional uh, pump monitor I really like this particular um, brand of pump pump is actually a brushless motor uh, style pump and so this is the control for it and you'll see I have another one of these that goes through uh, I use it for the filtration pump and both of them have just worked really awesome it's um the nice thing about it is when it's powered off it retains the the settings when you power it back on and automatically comes back on uh, so these have worked out really great one thing that's a neat little design feature on this is this whole uh, water control uh, system can just be uh, pushed right out of the way. So when I do, when I have it and I'm storing it, I have a cover over the top of it, I can just swing this in and it makes it really nice. Another thing too is it, it pivots this way so that you can get it located exactly where you want it. I went ahead and silk screened this cover which is working out and looks really nice. And this controller, by the way, has been also working out really well. Um, at first, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe the noise uh, from uh, the wire when it's operating would, would screw this up. Um, but as it turns out, it actually still functions really well. So that's been a really great, a really great um, thing to have. Basically, you just set it and forget it. It keeps the micro Siemens conductivity of the water between 15 and 20 most of the time. If I'm doing a production run of parts and uh, it's running for like, um, you know, maybe more than 10 hours, um, it might creep up just a little bit above 20, but then it comes right back down. And it's just really been working extremely well. <clears throat> One of the things when I was designing this, I had no clue how well my DI uh, filtration would work. And it's ended up working out really well. Um, in other words, I can keep the machine running for, let's say it's doing a, a 10 hour run and the one thing I was concerned about was that the, as the water was being pushed through this, that the particulate um, going into the water would be greater than what this filter could filter out but that so far that hasn't been the case now that may change after I get you know uh, many hundreds of hours on the machine but uh, for right now it's working out excellent and I'm really happy with it this is some calibration fluid that I use for calibrating uh, the micro Siemens controller these pumps have worked really well. However, this one right here, I did upsize. And in hindsight, I don't think I really needed to. But this is the flush cup pump. And um, it's putting out, I can easily get 200 PSI on the upper flush cup and 100 PSI on the lower flush cup um, with no problem. And that's really more than I think uh, is necessary. But this is the this is the tank fill pump. You can see it's a really large uh, two-inch diameter 
uh, flex tube there. And uh, this thing is awesome because it just fills up the tank in short order. Um, just a matter of um, maybe five to ten seconds and it's full. So that's worked out really good. One other thing that's been really neat is this... Um, I used these uh, sanitary uh, fittings right here for my drain tube. Now remember that as the machine's running, the flow cups are constantly putting water into the tank. So that has to drain through the overflow and it goes through here, which slopes down into the dirty tank down here. And so, you know, if I ever need to, to get into this, being able to just spin this off, loosening up a couple hose clamps, this whole assembly comes off. And the cool thing about it is that when you want to pressure wash out, which I haven't had to do yet, this is working really well, um, you can pressure, uh, just pull the tank out super easy um, in just a matter of minutes. So uh, the maintenance on it is really working out good. This is a cool little addition I put on uh, this one door on the left-hand side. I just have this little squeegee. So when I'm done with my uh, my operation and I'm, I'm cleaning it out, the clean-out's super easy. It's, I just go ahead and I, I can, with the doors closed, I can blow off the doors, which gets about 90% of the water down in the tank into the back corner. I do have this thing sloped slightly down into that corner. So it's nice because you can just blow the majority of the water out there. So then the last little bit of water, I can just go ahead and pop my squeegee off and then I can go ahead and squeegee the tank down to the back. And usually what I like to do is I'll squeegee it all the way to the back corner there. And then I'll grab two paper towels and I can wipe the rest of the whole machine down uh, with two paper towels, pretty much dries the whole inside out. And that's been working really great. Closing the door is getting ready for uh, for operating the machine is real simple. Just go ahead and you swing these two doors closed like this. And the way it's designed is that when this draws in with this clamp here, what it does is it pulls tight and with the rubber seal it squishes it down, making a really nice tight seal down even in this corner down here which is pretty tight. And it's just worked amazing. I haven't had a drop of water since I got it, got it up and running. You know what's surprising too is even after I've done a run and I've went ahead and used my air hose and blow out most of the water, I can open these doors up and there's very little water. I was going to put rails. You can see I even prepared for it. I have these screws under here to put uh, gutters. I was going to put a couple gutters in my original design, but it's really not needed. So this is the flush cup control panel, and um, I'm also really happy with the way this turned out. Um, basically, here's the control for the upper and the lower flush cup, and you can just get these dialed in to what you want. I, I seem to be running right between like 120 and 160 I kind of like for the upper flush cup, and the lower flush cup doesn't seem to matter as much unless you're doing something that's really tall. Um, a really thick part, but I usually typically will run this around 50 and um, If I'm doing a, like a four something that's really uh, much heavier uh, much thicker I, I'll run it up to a hundred, but otherwise this works really well um, Just at about like a hundred and fifty and fifty As you can see here's the other um, Brushless motor uh, pump controller there and these things just cycle on and off as needed uh, as I'm cutting. It's kind of cool. I do have a few ideas of things I want to do. I want to put a an overflow bypass for the dirty tank. And the reason for that is I figured if that sensor ever failed and the pump didn't turn on, that thing would just keep filling up. And the dirty tank's only 20 gallons, where I've got 55 gallons down there. <laughs> so you can imagine that would make quite a mess. Um, so I'll probably end up doing that. This um, model 1E EDM stands for one epic EDM. <laughs> I have all the skirts off of the machine right now. Uh, so we can take a good look inside here. This is my, my clean tank. And this is 55 gallons of um, DI water. 
And what I do is I use reverse osmosis water to fill it. And then it only takes about uh, two to three hours uh, running through the DI filtration system to go ahead and bring this tank up to about 15 microsiemens. So that's, that's really working out terrific. You can see these are my fine filtration uh, filters here. Um, and these are five micron uh, filters. And you can see the paper filters in my custom filtration system in the back are, are starting to get dirty, but these are still looking really nice and white, which is quite amazing. Here's the, here's the filtration that I built, uh, my filtration system. It's a little bit dark in there, but um, this has really worked out well. So the way this works is this has an auto switch in it, uh, this dirty tank. And what happens is as the water fills up, when it gets up to about this level, it kicks on and the pump uh, automatically turns on and starts pushing water through here, through this union and up into the paper filter filtration system. Then it goes from here, it drops down and it goes in through this finer uh, paper filtration. And from there, it goes into the uh, freshwater tank. And then what happens is the DI pump just go, just filters this as necessary to bring the micro siemens into the range that I want it. Now, I had to put this in. This was an afterthought. And this is actually a bleed valve for my uh, high pressure pump. So what it does is it allows some of the, pr some of the volume of water to go straight in back into the tank. And um, if I'm running something that's like four inches thick, I'll go ahead and shut this off and I'll use all of the pressure in the lower and upper flush cup. But otherwise, for 90% of the time, I have to turn this on. Otherwise, there's just too much pressure for doing thin materials. When I say thin, like three eighths of an inch or smaller, thinner. So you know I've been in love with my Technique servos. Um, they really are amazing. And uh, here's the power supply for it. And I did use their hub. They have a power distribution hub. I forget what they call it. But let me see if I can get back in here and show it to you. It's in this uh, cast aluminum box that's just behind there. I'll see if I can get an image of that for you. But that goes... that powers up all four of the servo motors. You know, I've got the y-axis here, the x-axis here, and then I have the two servo motors here for the, um, the wire feed and the tension. And so that's all been working really well. Here you can see the other view from the, um, the wire feed and speed controller right there. I built this really nice stand for the monitor. So I can pretty much put this monitor wherever I want it with this stand. <clears throat> it just swings swings out of the way or swings off to the side. So you can have the monitor sitting like this when you're operating. And one of the things I was really happy about is that the, um, the monitor doesn't have any flicker or any interference whatsoever. Um, when I'm cutting. And that's something I was concerned about. Um, I did go ahead and I shielded, all the cables are shielded. So this is a power cable that's shielded. And I put a sleeve, copper sleeve over the HDMI uh, to the monitor. So I think both of those are uh, two of the reasons why I've had such good success with this. But yeah, it's pretty neat. I went ahead and these are resin printed, these little covers here, these little bezels. And this is, uh, of course, for the USB. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to point out, the only issue I did have in relation to noise, and this did, this took me a little while to get figured out. Originally, I had this uh, little keyboard with a, um, a water uh, proofing silicone pad on it. This is a little Logitech pretty neat little keyboard and I know some other guys are using this to control their CNC's with but the trackpad right here was totally messed up with the noise from the EDM 
So I thought, well, that's a bummer. <laughs> so I went ahead and I had this one, uh, this little anchor uh, Bluetooth keyboard. And I thought, well, I shouldn't say Bluetooth, wireless keyboard. And so I thought, okay, I'll go ahead and just use this, which has worked absolutely awesome. But when I did do this and plug this in, um, I didn't use the original mouse because I thought the wireless mouse might have the same problem. So I used a wired mouse uh, plugged in uh, to where I normally put the load the files from. And that wire <laughs> caused a lot of problems uh, with the noise. It was basically like a huge antenna, I think, and uh, ended up freaking, freaking out the... Um, the sense of voltage and whatnot. And so it took me a while to figure that out. Then if then I just went ahead and switched and used the the wireless mouse with its own receiver here and it's worked perfect ever since. There's just a few things that I still want to do and that has to do with this mouse here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've already fabricated a, a stainless steel a uh, little uh, shelf underneath here, and that's where this mouse will live underneath here. It's just really ergonomic. It feels really good and uh, comfortable to operate it that way. I can go ahead and keep it up there when I'm stow it. But um, and then I did just add this pan here. This pan is just to help protect and keep dust and whatnot off of the off of the uh, servo off of the lead screws and the linear rails. Um, I think I may also do, there's two other things I might do, is I've got a, a, a special guard to keep water from splashing on the underside here. And um, it, it just wraps over this nice smooth um, uh, transition of stainless steel and then goes down the side here. Um, I might do the same for this one over on this side. I could even do it for the back, but I don't think the back is any big deal. So I might just do the same thing where some Teflon um, film comes over and then drapes down and just the weight of it will keep uh, any slack from building up in here. So those are a couple ideas of things that I want to do. I'm going to make a really nice bezel. Um, that'll be a shield. Uh, I can keep this tight, rigidly mounted, and it'll, it'll connect to all this uh, shielded uh, braid and keep that really well grounded. So that's another future upgrade. Um, the chopper has just been working amazing. Uh, we're at the back side of the machine now. Uh, this is my power control box. So this has got some heavy contactors in it and some solid state relays and whatnot in there. Here's the dirty tank you can see from the side of it. I did end up putting it, it's, it's got a uh, shim underneath here so that this whole thing is at an angle. And it just worked out better. My my sensor, you can see there's very little water. Just this little corner has got a little tiny bit. I don't know if you can see it there. A little tiny bit of water in it when it's not operating. But yeah, it's worked out amazing. And then, um, yeah, the wire goes a long way. I mean, shoot, you can run, you can make a whole bunch of parts. I was surprised. Now, it does vary a lot, the settings, you know, if you can turn that wire feed speed way up um, or you can turn it way down. And that's something I'm still playing with quite a bit uh, to see how it affects the cut and, and speed. Anyways, there's a quick walk around of the machine. And like I said, it's been pretty awesome. It just opens up a whole new, your brain starts thinking differently when you have this uh, capability. Um, it's really pretty awesome. Something that surprised me a little is, uh, you can imagine how heavy this thing is. Probably weighs close to 500 pounds, I would imagine, with the, uh, you know, uh, about 50 gallons of water in that tank plus everything else. Uh, so it rolls actually quite nice. These are pretty, uh, pretty, uh, uh, dense polyurethane wheels but i think i am going to make a couple jacks um, like four jacks that i can put on by the way this fan was just for maybe maybe a future uh add-on it doesn't seem to get too hot um one thing i was worried is about a you know heat being transferred into the water through the pump motor but uh it doesn't seem to be a problem i can run for a long time and this stays 
very cool. The motor gets real warm, but this stays cool, which is really nice. Anyways, what I was saying is uh, I'll probably make some uh, jacks that I can go ahead and pull this, get the weight up off of this. But it is nice. I can move this around by myself, which is really quite surprising. Um, 500 pounds. Uh, yeah, that's worked out super. I just went ahead and threw the side panels on so you could see how nice it looks when it's all closed up. They literally take less than 30 seconds to throw on there. It really worked out amazing. And like I said, I did 3D print a lot of parts, so even these uh, handles here are 3D printed. With the help of Mike at Bax EDM, I was able to put together a point-to-point diagram for all the electrical in my control cabinet. Basically there's four major parts to my electrical system. I've got this here, the control cabinet. I have a power control box. I have what I call a switcher box and I have a water control box. I'll go ahead and show you those other uh, components after this one, but just wanted to give you a brief look at how I laid out this cabinet. I decided to use a computer power supply unit for 5 volts and 12 volts uh, to power up the whole system. I also had to install another small isolated uh, 5 volt supply here on the side. Basically the way it's set up is I have a uh, Intel Nook CPU up here and its power supply. I have the main Dynamotion control right here with its breakout board and then I have all my wiring uh, out inputs and outputs down here. This is another small 24 volt power supply and I in the, right here I have added a couple of small uh, stepper motor drivers and these are only for a fourth axis and the Z axis. All my major um, XY and my wire feed and tension are Technique servo motors, which I highly recommend and have been working awesome. The build of the control cabinet was really fun and went really well. Um, only a couple of gotchas that I ran into is when I was wiring. Out of the uh, Dynamotion control, it has a uh, logic of 3.5 uh, volt where my Technic servos require 5 volt. So I had to use a level shifter uh, that's mounted just underneath this little cover here. And it basically takes the outputs from this uh, jack here and then goes through the level shifter out to the servo motors. So that was one extra thing that I had to do in order to use the clear path servos. But other than that, it went together really nicely and having this pin out really made it great. I think anybody could reproduce this. Uh, basically, it's like paint by numbers. Don't get me wrong, it's still a lot of work, but it, it was really a lot of fun to do. My main power is located up here and it flips a contactor in my power box, which is just behind, located just behind this control cabinet. One of the cool things that really was nice to make this uh, to work in here is you can see how well lit this is. I did put a switch down here so that as soon as the doors open, if the unit's powered on, it automatically lights everything up and it really made it nice. I ended up having that powered on quite a bit while I was working in here. One really important thing that can't be stressed enough is the shielding uh, required in order to make everything operate correctly in an EDM environment and uh, that's one of the things this heavy steel cabinet I think has really helped me in regards to shielding. Every single cable going to uh, outside of this cabinet is shielded. Even the monitor has its own dedicated uh, power line that's uh, fully shielded. Chris Sorensen and Paul Anthony both asked how much does it cost to build a machine like mine? 
And uh, I've had many other messages and uh, emails about the same, asking the same question. And I would have to say I'm probably pushing 15,000. Um, I had many of the things I used to build my machine uh, on hand. So um, this is a best guess, but it, it's pretty close to about 15K. Now, I think this could be done for a lot less. And um, I've responded to many people, uh, you know, stating that I think it could probably be built for on the absolute low end, probably somewhere around five, four or 5,000. And uh, a pretty decent, reasonable machine could probably be built for somewhere around eight to 10,000. In future videos, I'm gonna go through uh, areas I think you could shave some of the costs and still have a, a good uh, machine. Um, also had a lot of questions about whether or not I was gonna uh, provide plans. And to tell you the truth, I'm kind of keeping it in my back pocket. I, uh, I'm thinking in the future I might produce a kit for some of the more difficult items to manufacture to help other people out building. However, I did want to help uh, people that have actually purchased a BX-17, so I made uh, the Fusion files uh, available on the forum. Now, the forum's only available to actual um, uh, Bax EDM customers, but um, you know, if you're serious about building it and uh, uh, you're in the forum, go ahead and take a look and you can find uh, a set of uh, Fusion files there. Many of you guys have asked, hey, Warner, where have you been since I hadn't posted a video in so long? And to tell you the truth, I've snuck in a few special projects. For those of you that have followed my Instagram site, uh, you would see what I've been up to. But one of the big things was implementing a UR robot to take parts in and out of my CNC mill. Uh, had a lot of fun with that. It took longer than I thought it would. Uh, Dealing with robots, it's, uh, it's super great once you got everything dialed in, but uh, it's a lot of work and tricky to get everything uh, optimized and uh, reliable. Anyways, uh, just wanted to let you know, I have been I'm constantly building, even though I'm not posting videos. I thought it would be fun in the next videos to go ahead and take you from start to finish. Uh, generating the tool path in Fusion, walking out to the machine, pulling the cover off and getting it fired up. I'll show you exactly the whole process using the software um, on the machine and everything uh, start to finish. So look forward to that in the next video. Um, I think I'll also talk more about the water system. And that's a big part of the, of the build <clears throat> and a big part of the machine. So uh, I think we'll go a little bit deeper into that. And, you know, the water system is expensive to do it right and to do something that's reliable. But that's a place that could also, if you're just using it to make, you know, to cut for an hour or two, um, and then you're not going to use it for another few months, that's a place you could definitely save a lot of money on the build. So anyways, I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in to the BerryBot 3D channel. Uh, please, if this is something you enjoy and uh, you would like to see future videos of, consider subscribing. Please give me a like and definitely give me a comment. I uh, really appreciate it and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.